everybody, Julian here. And in this video, I wanted to talk about the three ways of Airbnb investing because Airbnb is just another niche in the real estate spectrum. Uh, but within that spectrum and within that kind of niche, we also have some subcategories of ways of investing. So we're going to be breaking those down with you. So uh, just jumping right into this, uh, the first one is going to be your traditional buy and hold. So this would be where you are purchasing a property and then uh, paying for it turning it into an Airbnb short-term rental. Um, with this model, you are going to need uh, a good amount of money. So I would say the first thing is gonna be you're spending around, you know, up to $40,000, $50,000, sometimes more, just depends on the property. Um, a lot of people purchase these properties as like vacation rentals. Uh, so you could do like a turnkey vacation rental. Uh, the reason why I put buy and hold into a whole category though is because you're gonna be putting a lot of money into a property. Uh, first is gonna be the down payment. Uh, and then second is maybe like the renovation costs. And then uh, third is gonna be like um, the time, the holding costs. Uh, so there's a lot of costs associated with it, uh, which is why I reserve purchasing property as a whole separate kind of model uh, or a whole separate type, type of way of investing in the Airbnb space. You could be looking at spending 40, 50 plus thousand dollars, um, but the returns are still gonna be good. If you're trying to pay off a property uh, really quickly and maybe you are uh, utilizing this form of investing with some different forms. So maybe you're doing like, uh, maybe you're a wholesaler. So you would wholesale a property. Maybe you decide to keep it though and then do a fix and flip. So you found a really good deal, you fix it up and then you turn it into a short-term rental. Uh, so that way you're really leveraging like boom, boom, boom. Uh, you're taking money from finding a good deal, then you're taking the uh, the renovation and you're adding, you know, value to it, which increases the equity. And then you turn that into a short term rental, which, you know, you might be able to pay off the property in a short amount of time. This is a really powerful way to be able to, you know, gain a lot of equity, but it also does cost a lot of money and you do have to have skills in other ways of investing. If you're just going out there and just trying to purchase a property to turn it into a short term rental and you're not adding any other value, um, you're going to be probably spending a lot of money into it. Plus the furniture, um, so that, that is one whole separate section, which I would just call and put that into the buy and hold section. All right. The second form of Airbnb short term rental investing is the rental arbitrage model. So, uh, rental arbitrage, Airbnb arbitrage, master lease, re-rent, corporate housing, sublease. These are all kind of terms that get thrown around in this space. Essentially what this just is, is we are working with landlords and then taking properties and turning them into short-term rentals. So I would work with an investor or a landlord and say, hey, you know, I'd like to, you know, uh, rent out your property um, as, you know, a corporate housing company or, you know, whatever, whatever your pitch is going to be. Um, we, we talk about the pitch on the channel, on this channel. So if you want more videos on how to do that, um, you know, go watch some of our other videos. But uh, essentially what you're doing is you're just re-renting a property short term. So you will uh, you don't have to put a lot of money into the property because you're just paying for rent. So I would work with a landlord, rent out their space, furnish it, and then I would short term rent it. Now, this is the second model, um, you know, the first being the buy and hold, which is going to cost a lot of money. Rental arbitrage doesn't cost as much money. You'd be looking to spend anywhere between 5000 to probably $10,000 uh, plus just depends on the location. Uh, you know, how much is the rent in that location and how much are you spending on furnishing? What type of clientele are you going to be designing the unit for? If you're going to be outsourcing all the design and the furnishing and stuff like that, obviously your costs are going to go up there. But if you're going to be doing everything yourself, probably five to 15 is, is a good uh, rule of thumb. And with this model, though, you're not having to spend a lot of money on anything really other than the furniture. Um, the furniture and the rent are going to be your biggest costs. Um, and the returns, it's 100% because uh, you can really just kind of scale this model really quickly. And the rental arbitrage model, I would say, is, is the most profitable of all three. Um, one, because you're keeping 100% of the profit after, you know, expenses. But really, you just have to figure that your initial cost is just the cost of furniture. Uh, and furniture is pretty nominal compared to having to purchase a property and, you know, uh, fix it up and deal with contractors you know, there's a lot more value that you can get with the buy and hold model, but you also have to have a lot more skill and a lot more cash to be able to uh, go in this way, unless you're doing other creative ways. But that's really for more experienced real estate, um, you know, flippers or professionals. But if you're just coming and this is your first entry into real estate, 
um, and you're just getting into Airbnb, I would honestly stay away from buy and holds and just focus on maybe starting off with a rental arbitrage because again, your costs are very nominal. Uh, you know, you can start off really easy with like a studio. You're not having to put a whole lot of money into the furniture or the, or the rent payments. And, um, it's just a good way to get your feet wet. And it's also really scalable because you are getting a lot of cash, you know, the same amount of cash that you'd be getting from a traditional buy and hold, you'd be getting with an arbitrage unit. And then you could just take that money that you're making from your arbitrage unit and then put it into more properties, uh, more arbitrage units. So, and it really starts to compound. Uh, you really have to kind of think of this like a, like a cog or something like um, it, it, the, the money that you're making really just fuels into the expansion of more. If you're purchasing property, your progression is gonna be really limited based on how much cash you have. With the arbitrage model, you're gonna be making a lot of cash. It's really cheap to be able to pick up more units, which in turn feeds into a self. Um, I've, I've talked kind of about, um, you know, this exponential growth on this channel as well and how that, you know, the more properties you, you, you make, uh, the more money you're making and the more properties you can get. And it really starts to go up and up and up at that point. Uh, so that's going to be the second is the arbitrage model. Third is going to be the co-host model. So the co-host model has got kind of a special place in my heart. Um, you know, being an active duty military guy, um, and you know, just having purchased a property and putting a lot of money into fixing a property up. Um, I was kind of, you know, almost scared off from, you know, traditional real estate investing because that was really just my first experience was purchasing my primary residence and then, you know, working with a contractor and that, that was a big pain. Um, so I was really strapped for cash after that whole, um, after that whole remodel. Co-hosting though, just basically allowed me to manage other people's properties and then get, start getting paid cash. Uh, for doing that. So I didn't have to put any money into the furniture. The only thing that it cost me was, you know, my, my time, but uh, really the time is again, it's if you're already renting out something. So like, you know, I fit, I finished my basement unit in my home, I uh, renovated it and then I listed it on uh, Airbnb. And so I still had that, I had the systems in place to be able to operate that. And then I found a co-host. So I managed somebody else's property. So they already, you know, purchased a property, they already put the money into the furniture and then they needed somebody else to manage it for them. I basically just came in and I said, okay, I'll manage it for you and I'll take a percentage. Um, so they already did all the upfront work. They put all the money into the investment and I was basically just able to plug their property into my systems and then operate it all the same. So it was super easy and automatically I just saw my, you know, my, my monthly paycheck go up, you know, hundreds, 200, 300, uh, a month just managing somebody else's property. Um, and it really wasn't a lot of extra work for me. Um, it's just, you know, another thing that I have to keep and maintain and make sure that the guests are satisfied, um, you know, make sure that it operates well. But uh, the so the third model, again, just to recap is co-hosting. You're not putting any money into the furniture. Um, there's no lease payments. You don't have to pay for rent or anything. You're just managing other people's properties and making a lot of money. So in this video, I just wanted to recap with you guys, what are the three different ways of Airbnb uh, short-term rental investing? I'm gonna make some more videos talking and diving a little bit more deep into each model, um, you know, because co-hosting around rental arbitrage, um, uh, that's really just all we talk about on this channel is, is a majority of those. Uh, we don't typically talk about buy and holds just because it's not really the strategy that we're going for, because um, the model that we go for is uh, using co-hosting and rental arbitrage to really speed up the process and uh, really start to lead to exponential growth and also shortening your return on investment. Because again, with rental arbitrage, you're putting money into a property. Uh, you know, it might take you six months, eight months to get your, your initial investment back. Uh, and if you're doing this with multiple properties, it starts to add up. So with co-hosting and managing others, we can basically shorten our time period for when we could get that initial investment back, uh, allowing us really just good profit margins at the end of the month. So. Um, just that's just kind of a, a quick recap of the three different models. I hope that this uh, video really helped you. Um, you know, this was something that I kind of wish that I knew when I first started about these different ways that you can invest in the space because a lot of people, they just talk about one particular model, but really there's three and you have to understand all three if you really want to be able to scale in this particular niche and just focus in on the Airbnb short-term rental space. So again, my name is Julian. Hope you like this video and I'll talk to you guys later. Keep on hosting.